in Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition. The gelatinous cube, or athcoid, is described as a transparent, jelly-like substance typically coming in the shape of a cube or other rhomboid. While they were considered mindless and without any sort of guidance, they were apparently a favored creature of Gonader, a greater god of abominations, oozes, and outcasts, connected to the Far Realm and worshipped by some of the drow and other citizens of the Underdark. The standard gelatinous cube has an AC of 6 and 84 hit points, with a speed of 15 feet. They have terrible stats with the exception of constitution, but are immune to being blinded, charmed, deafened, exhausted, frightened, or knocked prone. They have blind sight up to 60 feet, and then are completely blind beyond this point. They have the trait Ooze Cube, in which they take up their entire space, 10 by 10. Other creatures are allowed to enter this space, but if they do, they are automatically attacked by the Engulf feature, and have disadvantage on the saving throw. Creatures inside the cube can be seen, but have total cover, making them almost impossible to target with line of sight spells. Players can try to pull each other out of the cube using their action and succeeding on a DC 12 strength check, but anyone pulling takes 3d6 acid damage, whether they succeed or fail, a potential of 3 to 18. The cube has a maximum occupancy of one large creature or four medium or smaller creatures at one time. The cube is also transparent, making it hard to see if it's not moving. Players must be actively looking for danger, like traps and other things, and succeed on a DC 15% check to see the cube. The cube can make an attack with its pseudopod, which has a plus 4 to hit and deals 3d6 acid damage, a potential of 3 to 18. The other action it has is engulf, in which it can move up to 15 feet, entering a player's space. When it does so, they have to make a dc12 dex save. Succeeding this, a player chooses to be thrown back or to the side by 5 feet, but any choosing to stand their ground is then treated as though they failed. On a failed save, the creature is absorbed into the cube, taking 3d6 acid damage and is restrained, being totally un able to breathe. At the start of the cube's turn, any creatures inside of it take 66 acid damage, a potential of 6 to 36. As a DM, there are many ways to use a gelatinous cube, but the standard way is to use it as a living trap. Most DMs will place a cube in a 10x10 hallway to block a path, or perhaps on the ceiling to drop down on their players. The choices are really endless, but I personally have two favorite alternatives. The first is to have the cube acting as the floor of a smaller large room. I'd start by luring players in with treasure or a creature to fight, and then describe them slowly slipping through the floor to a 10x10 space covered in the cube. My absolute favorite way of using these cubes, however, is as a wall against a pit trap. I would have a pit trap in plain sight of the party in a 10 foot wide hallway. I would make sure that the pit is only about 10 feet across, which adventurers can all make with a long jump. On the other side of the pit, I would have a transparent gelatinous cube waiting just at the edge, like an acid filled jelly safety pad. It's likely that the players will be so focused on the obvious trap in front of them that they will forget to check their other surroundings, and someone will jump over and fall right into the cube. This starts a difficult encounter, as to pull someone out of the cube, they must be within five feet, but there's that horrible pit standing in their way. The Gelatinous Cube's creation is credited to Gary Gygax in the original D&D Greyhawk supplement, and then later in the first Monster Manual, but he likely drew inspiration from the many science fiction short stories and comics popular in the 70s and 80s. However, the original version of this creature might come from the 1935 Weird Tales story The Destroying Horde by Donald Wandre, in which a giant blob monster described as the size of a bushel basket rolls out of a university animal biology department and attacks a young woman by engulfing her and dissolving her flesh, leaving only bleached bones behind. This monster then splits in half and duplicates, which happens over and over again in the story. The scientists who accidentally created these creatures say that they are giant amoeba, and if allowed to eat and split further, they will eventually consume the world. But he tells the hero that fire can kill them, and in the end, they manage to destroy every single one. In comparing the monster to the possible inspiration, we find that only the description and attacks are the same. The blobs in the destroying horde are giant slimes that melt their victims down and then mindlessly seek others to consume, while the gelatinous cube in D&D does the the same thing, but they do not split apart and duplicate, and they don't have a weakness to fire. If you enjoyed that video, please leave a like and comment below, and consider subscribing to the channel. You can also join the Patreon for $1 a month, link in the description below, to access videos days before they're posted here, as well as other exclusive stuff like short stories, videos, and more. For all of my other content, you can find me on Twitch at Moglaroo, YouTube and TikTok at Moglaroo Streams, or my website, mwjgilmore.com.